Shari, and today I'm going to be making this fun barnyard reveal wheel card. I'm going to start off with the Gotta Have Gingham 6x6 paper pad, and I'm just going to find the blue gingham, and I'm going to use this as sort of the sky for my scene that I'm going to create. I'm going to use the reveal wheel die, and I'm going to use the speech bubble add on. So you can see that little speech bubble window will fit right into the puzzle piece part of this die and I already have a piece of tape that I just keep on the back of the die that will hold it in place. I'm going to line this up with my gingham and to keep it straight as I run it through my die cut machine I'm just going to add a little piece of washi tape. I'm also going to cut the same panel from a piece of craft cardstock but this one does not have the window in the puzzle piece. So it's just a backer piece that's the same size and it's going to match the card base that you see there up at the top. So it's just going to be hidden behind the reveal wheel but this gives me a place to stick my wheel down. I also have a piece of Nina Solar White cardstock and I'm just going to cut the two wheel pieces from this die set from that white cardstock. This is a scrap piece of green watercolor wishes 12 by 12 paper. And I'm cutting that front panel from this as well just so that the stitching lines are consistent all the way around. And then I will cut the top of it with one of the grassy, simple grassy hillside borders. So that'll be the grass for the bottom of my little scene with my barnyard animals. This is a little scrap piece of sticky note cardstock. And I'm just going to cut out the frame of that speech bubble out of that yellow. I also have a piece of noble fur cardstock that I've cut with that front panel for the reveal wheel. So you can see that it lines up at the bottom. And then I'm using one of the puffy cloud border dies to cut some what I call trees in the background. I actually use these puffy clouds in this way more than I use it for clouds at the top. I just think it kind of makes a nice bubbly like tree line in the background. So I'm going to go ahead and adhere the light colored green grass to the front of the stitch cloud border there and now on the back of that I'm going to add some adhesive and I'm going to add that to my gingham panel. So now I kind of have all the ground for my animals but I'm not going to build my scene until I get my reveal wheel put together. So I've got the reveal wheel sentiments here and I'm going to be using the ones that are kind of square in the hole. But I also wanted it to say hope your birthday is and then the sentiment change. So I just took the stamp that says hope your day is and cut off the hope your part. Added the birthday stamp that also comes in this set. And I'm just going to stamp that above the opening. Now, if you're paying attention, you probably notice I forgot the word is. So it just says, hope your birthday, and then the words are going to change. So this is the way I came up to fix that. So I'm going to stamp is on the left side of the window. So I'm just using the day is part that I cut off and just inking up is. And then to balance it out, I'm going to add an exclamation point to the right side. And the exclamation point is in a different stamp set, but there's a lot of exclamation points in a lot of Lawn Fawn sets. This one happens to come from the little ice cream sweetest flavor set. So now it looks a little bit more like it's on purpose. This was just a way I came up with to kind of save the card. So I've got a brad here and I'm going to stick it through the small circle and I'm just going to spin that around a little bit, make sure that it turns freely on the brad. And then I'm going to take the other circle and I'm going to come up through the back of it so the embossed lines are on the front. And I'm just going to spin that around and make sure that it spins freely as well because this is a larger brad. If you had a small brad, you would not have to do this. So the brad comes through the back and I'm going to be stamping on the front of this wheel. Now this is a little bit different than Kelly's method of putting together a reveal wheel. What I'm going to do is basically find the center where the reveal wheel should be. So I found the center of my panel. 
And I'm just going to draw a pencil line. And this is all on the back of the sheet of paper. And then the other thing I do is I'm lining up the little notch on my grid mat and binding the center of that. And then I'm just going to use my T-square to draw the other pencil line. You don't have to worry about these pencil lines because they're just going to get covered up because they're on the back. You're never going to see them. The other thing you can do is do the same thing on the wheel so you can line up the lines. But you can also just use the scallops and line up the scallop from top to bottom and left to right. This is just a different way of lining it up. Um, you can still do the way that Kelly does with looking at it from the front side and shifting it to you don't see the score lines. But I'm a little anal and so this is this way I know it's perfectly centered. So I'm adding some photo adhesive just to this small circle. And while I hold it in place, I will put it on that craft panel that I also cut. So I'm gonna hold it lined up with those pencil lines. I know it's centered. And then I can just line it up with the craft panel on the back. So my wheel will be stuck to the back panel. And that front panel can come off. Now before I detach the wheel, I'm going to lightly trace the window with a pencil so I can see where to do my stamping. Now I can take that wheel off and I know exactly where to do my stamping. I can lay it flat. So I'm going to be using, like I said before, kind of the square sentiments in here. So the first one says super duper. And then after each sentiment, I'm going to turn my circle a quarter of a turn so that I'm always stamping up and down. I don't have to worry about turning my stamp or turning it to the side. So the second one I have in here is fun filled. Really great. And finally, the best ever. Once I have those stamped, I want to make sure my ink is dry. And then I can take an eraser and erase those pencil lines. Now I can reattach the wheel and I know that my sentiments are lined up perfectly. So I've added a whole bunch of foam adhesive here and I'm adding it to this back panel so that I know it is out of the way of my circle and it is able to spin freely. And now that I've pulled off all the backer papers, I can just line it back up and adhere that front panel down permanently. Now I can adhere that whole panel to my card base. I'm just putting a whole lot of adhesive on it here. And I'm just going to center it onto this craft card base that I've already cut. Make sure it's stuck down well. And now I am ready to start decorating with my little animals. So I had this sheet that I had stamped out a long time ago with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. And I had already colored a couple of the animals. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to use those that I had already colored. So I'm just coloring in the little pig here using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and some water. So these work a lot like watercolor, and you can add water and sort of blend them out. So I'm just adding a little bit of pink, and then I'm coloring his hose with some gray. I added a little bit of very pale gray to the horse that was already there. He's colored with grays and kind of a mustardy color. And then I did his hose. And I also wanted the little chicken, so I'm just going to add some yellow. And sort of blend that out. That one's pretty easy to color. 
and a little bit of orange for his feet and his beak. Then I'm going to use the coordinating dies that go with this stamp set and I'm just going to hold those in place with some washi tape and cut out my animals. So now I'm just trying to figure out the exact placement. I kind of wanted a little crowd um, to feel like it's a party. But to me, all of them across just seemed very low. Like it didn't feel like it filled the space very well. So I ended up kind of stacking them, like the pig and the chicken. It's like they made an animal pyramid. So once I figured out how I wanted them there, then I could start sticking them down. So I have my Lawn Fawn glue tube. And I'm going to use this to adhere down the pig and the little chick. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little glue to his head, put the chick on there. That way I can figure out the spacing perfectly and know how high to put the pig so that the chicken isn't in the way of my little window. And this is me just double checking how I wanted them to be. So I'm going to go ahead and use that glue to glue down the pig kind of in the center where he looks like he's floating at the moment. And then I'm going to use some thin foam adhesive for the cow and the horse. And this will kind of just pop them up a little bit, make them look like they're a little more in the foreground. And the pig will kind of be tucked behind their heads. So I have this, as you can see, pile of little die cut hearts that I just kind of keep. When I have some scrap paper, I just run it through my die cut machine with a variety of heart dies. Um, there's the hearts, there's some little hearts with the journaling card. I think there's some little hearts in another set, but I just sort of keep these on hand because they make great embellishments, especially when they're already cut. So I just picked out a few in various sizes in pink. And I'm just gluing those down. And then I'm going to go in with the little stamp that says turn the wheel. Stamp that right to the side of the wheel so you know to turn the wheel. And then I'm adding some stickles for embellishment. I actually really struggled with embellishing this. I had some yellow Nouveau drops and I really didn't like them and I actually wiped them off. Then I tried sequins and those weren't doing it for me. So I just ended up with some stardust stickles because I feel like this adds some interest but it's not blaring and in your face. And I actually forgot to film myself turning it after I put on all those embellishments. So there's a little look at how it operates even though the hearts and the glitter is gone. So here's another look at that card and here's a closer look. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye!